The Vagina Gina 2. Once you get past its sketchy name, this is a mobile suit variant based on the original Vagina Gina from the manga and movie Gundam F91. This right here is an awesome mobile suit concept, which is essentially a Gundam crossed with an Italian supercar. However, this right here, the Reborn 100 version, is the polar opposite to awesome and a bronze tier flop. The best way to sum it up, it's like a high grade from the early 2000s was shot with a growth ray. Honestly, if I did not know any better, I wouldn't even believe this was an official Bandai kit at all, especially not from 2019. For me, this doesn't tick any of the boxes that makes me love Gunpla as a hobby. It was no fun to build, it's not fun to play around with, the accessories and the articulation are basic at best, and the absolutely worst aspect, it looks plain nasty out of the box. The color separation is extremely poor, and there's something just so weird about the glossy, seemingly semi-translucent red it's made of. The plastic just looks so cheap. For a kit that retails around 3,100 yen, I would just suggest a hard pass, add a few hundred more yen, and get yourself a decent 1100 Gundam kit. And let's find out why. Ah, uh, it's gonna be one of those again. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review, and today I'm taking a look at the Reborn 100 V- Ooh, don't try and read that too quick. Vigna Gina 2. So this kid has a really odd name because in Japanese it's Vigina Gina. So that would make it Vigina Gina. So for the review, I'm just gonna go with the Japanese, so it's Begina Gina from here on out. Anyway, as usual, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so if you want one of your own, link down there in the description. Okay, so there is what it looks like out of the box snapped together with no stickers used besides the one for the eyes, which is usually what I do for these reviews. I didn't add any panel lining anywhere just yet because I wanted to kind of address the elephant in the room here. I hate this. So you might think that is a bit of a strong opinion, but I don't find anything whatsoever likable about this kit. The first thing I have to mention is that absolutely putrid shade of red. So I get what they're going for right here. With F91, a lot of it is based on sports cars. And you can tell what they're going for here is that classic Ferrari red. They're trying to get a bit of gloss on top of an extreme, almost candy-like red. But... Maybe they went a little too candy with this because this just looks like it's made out of red jelly bean. There's something so kind of translucent or something about the red and it is quite frankly horrendous looking. This is the worst looking Gunpla kit I have seen probably ever. I actually think this could have been saved if that red wasn't so bad but once again with these Reborn 100 kits I will mention that I find they're a bit on the odd side. So first off, I will mention I don't hate them all, but a lot of them I don't particularly like. As straight builds, they're not great kits. However, I will mention that a simple kit like the Gun Easy is quite good, and frankly, I do absolutely love the Gundam Mark III. Really great kit there. Definitely sets the bar high for Reborn 100. This, however, is down in the gutter. So I will mention at this point right here, I do not really like to give kits bad reviews because for some reason or another, the videos tend to get a lot of dislikes, but in this case, I just cannot ignore how much this thing really sucks. For example, this thing costs 3,100 yen for a subpar kit. Add 1,000 yen or less to that, and you can get some absolutely awesome kits like the Master Grade Freedom 2.0 or the Master Grade Dynamis. So this just is not worth your money at all. So unless you really need to have a Begina Gina 2 of your own, I highly recommend avoiding it. And here's some more reasons why. So once again, that semi-translucent, super glossy red looks awful. The detail doesn't show up whatsoever. I will panel line it a bit in a second to see what we can get out of that. But just for comparison's sake, here's some nice red kits beside it. There is the Master Grade Sazabi Verka, the Master Grade Psycho Gundam, as well as the Synergy. So you might mention these are all Verka kits. They're fairly high priced, but just to kind of go against that, here is the high-grade Astroth Origin, red looking so much better, and here is the inner frame of the Oryx Zeromaru. All those reds looking so much better than this mess. 
So I will mention at this point on the screen, the camera, I'm not really seeing the differences I'm seeing in person between these two colors. So I just threw up a photo of the Astrop and the Begina Gina under more controlled lighting with the saturation bumped down a little bit and hopefully it will be a bit more apparent just how jelly beanie and cheap looking the Begina Gina is. Because if it looks the same on screen right now as the Astrop, then it seems like this weird plastic is kind of hard to capture but very apparent in person. So now just as a bit of a test of how much you can save this with basic minimal effort, I'm going to panel line both the head and the front skirting armors to see if they look any bit better. So what you see right here is before panel lining and right now up on the right you'll see what it's like after that bit of panel lining. And just for good measure I did stick the decal on the head because it was looking a bit on the naked side but all in all does this save it? Does the panel lining and the decal save it? Not really, even panel lining looks bad on this wonky colored plastic. So I've been beating that red dead horse for way too long, so how is the rest of the color accuracy? Well, quite frankly, that is rubbish too. I mean, I haven't seen a set of color correcting stickers this big in quite a while. I know Reborn 100s aren't meant to be all that great, but they did used to say that these were meant to, on the surface, replicate a master grade and I don't think so. So as for what they're for, all these reds here, these are for color correcting these fin sections up on the shoulders. So as you can see on the manual, that is what they're meant to look like right there. This is what we get, just flat black. As for these gray ones right here, they would be for on these thruster sections around on the back. They should all have a black trim on them like so, or a dark gray one I should say. This is what we have, so very, very basic. And while I have this kit turned around and this section on the box, all the inside of these thrusters is meant to be yellow and once again, just solid black. Same goes for the bottom of the feet here. Again, just in red on the model kit. And all in all, even sticking all these on is definitely not gonna save it. A model kit with a lot of stickers just looks bad. So all in all, if you're buying this kit, you're gonna have to paint it, have to. So is there any redeeming factors visually about this at all? Well. Definitely. The actual physical structure, the silhouette, the shape, the proportions is all quite good. So at the end of the day, all we can assume with this kit is it's a basis in which to make yourself a nice Begina Gina too, but just out of the box, quite disappointing. So now moving on to the accessories and will this be the redeeming factor for this kit? Well, not quite. This essentially just feels like a high grade from 10 or more years ago. Everything is pretty basic. So as for the manipulators we get in here, we've got these standard holding style hands with a big square peg and one right hand holding hand with a trigger finger. So in here we don't get any kind of dynamic or posed hands. So next up then is the beam sabers, never really all the most exciting aspect of a model kit. These are as bog standard as they come. They do have a tab right there on the side for attaching them into the hands of the model kit. And I will mention here that when I showed the overview of the accessories, I showed these beams because it does come with these beam sabers, but it also comes with these pink ones. And according to the instructions, these are actually the ones that you use. So to use the beam sabers, it's that usual pop off half the hand, plug that into the palm like so, then you just close it up again. And right there is a quick example of what the Begina Gina will look like posed on a shelf with both of its beam sabers. When not in use, the beam sabers can be stored on this section round here on the butt flap by removing this piece. Then the tabs just slot into those slots like this right here and that then slots back on just like that. Next up then onto the long ranged weapons and we have the beam rifle. This is pretty simple, all in solid black. We do not get a sticker for the sight however, that's just gonna stay in solid black like the rest of it. And as for moving parts, this handle down here can move side to side. Just like with the beam saber that attaches into the hand like so, this time into the hand with the trigger finger, it does have somewhat of a shaky grip on that, not very flush. And that right there is a quick idea of what it will look like attached. So this right here has to be the most unique aspect about this kit and one of the most unique weapons I've seen on a kit in a while. This right here is the Shot Lancer. So essentially this is a close combat weapon, basically a lance for running other mobile suits through, but it has a pair of machine guns up on top here. And what makes it called the shot lancer is the fact that the lance section of this can be removed. So essentially it shoots out of the shot lancer and this right here is the projectile. So that is pretty funny, pretty awesome. Once again though, this is pretty basic. It's all in black besides this little red section here, which I assume is meant to be the sight. But all in all, this is pretty fun. And to me, the best aspect of this kit. Anyway, there is what it will look like equipped 
in the hand of the Begina Gina 2. I've also attached the energy shield there so you can check out what that is like as well. And all in all, I have to say, this double machine gun lance launching gun is pretty damn cool. Speaking of that shield, as for how you attach that, it's pretty similar to the F91. This top red section right here, which should have an emblem on it, pops off like so. As you can see, it's quite similar to the F91, just not as detailed. This then just clips on like this, and that all fixes back on just like so. So this is pretty okay looking. I'd give it a vigorous level of maybe 4.5 out of 10. Nah, I'll give it a full 5. Anyway, once again, there is what it looks like with that equipped, as well as that awesome Shot Lancer. But anyway, while I'm belly aching all the time about this, I might as well keep it up. Because the way this clips on, the pegs have to go through the shield, which is an extra little bit of length. That does mean it falls off quite easily because the pegs don't slot in as far as they did without the shield. On top of that, this big long section of the Shot Lancer does mean it's hard to pose it. All the time it's going through the underarm like this, and that means it's kind of not really going to go into a lot of fun poses. So again, these are cool weapons, but with the limited articulation and their bulkiness, you're not going to get a lot of fun poses out of this. As well as all of that, we've got this here, this bazooka, which I assume is an extra leftover from the standard Reborn 100 Begina Gina. This isn't mentioned in the manual or on the sides of the box, but it's just a big hunk of black plastic and it can move slightly like so. As for other leftovers, this is the leftover plastic we get, some of that red, some black, and once again, these are all sections I assume came from the original white Begina Gina. So just this time in black and red. And one final thing that I almost forgot to mention, it does have your standard base adapter in here that just slides in like so, but nothing all that exciting. So now moving on to the last aspect, and of course that is the build and the articulation. So build-wise, this is sturdy enough, Nothing great, but at the same time, nothing's gonna fall off on you. The articulation itself is extremely basic, as you'd expect from Reborn 100, but anyway, let's start from the head down. At the head here, it's your standard combination of ball joint up here and your little giggity giggity joint down there, so pretty standard here. You got your tilt all the way around, and you're up, and you're down. Shoulder joints are quite standard as well. These pop out like that. The shoulder armor can be moved up and down independently to the arm. The shoulder fins can move as well, that's the top one there all the way up. There's the bottom one all the way down and all the way up again, so quite a bit of articulation to these, quite a bit of pivot. At the shoulder there, there is the arm all the way around, so what you'd expect, that's quite standard. Full rotation up here, your basic 90 degree bend there at the elbow, and bog standard ball joint here at the wrist. There's somewhat of an ab crunch here, but nothing much, there is all the way forward all the way back, just a peg at the waist, so that means just rotation there. A ball joint at the waist, so that means this can flip all the way up like that. Also has a little bit of in and out. Side skirt is a ball joint, up, down, forward, back. We've got a basic locked in place butt flap. We do have a swinging back and forward mechanism inside the waist. That does mean the legs can swing forward and back. Both legs are independent. There's that kick all the way up to the front, can't complain all the way out to the back and that is blocked a bit by the butt flap. Swinging that forward, you don't really get much more out of that. Usually the case with a fixed butt. As for the legs all the way out, we do get the full splits. Full rotation there at the upper leg. Just like the elbow, the knee is quite basic. We only get a 90 degree bend there. All these little thruster segments on the back of the leg, they can flip up like so. So can this little section here, it can move up and down ever so slightly. But as you can see in there, it is quite basic and doesn't look very pretty. Front armor flap moves up and down ever so slightly. At the ankle, we've got two points of articulation, one up here, one down here. There is that top one. The bottom one then gives us a bit of up and down at the feet. Not an incredible amount. Combined together, there's all the way up. There is all the way down. And finally, there is the side to side pivot. And here's just an idea of what it's like functionally on the ground. There's all the way to the front, all the way to the back, and there it is, side to side. So not bad, but not awful. Okay, so moving now around to the backpack, and I will mention something here. I did say the build was quite sturdy for the most part, besides this right here. So this did have two verniers in it, which pop in like this, and now it only has one, because the other one has just shot across the room, never to be seen again. This one shot off too, but I managed to find it. As you can see here, this is a flat peg and a flat bottom on the vernier. The attachment points here are on these small little domes, 
So what we're getting, I guess Bandai is considering articulation. So they kind of sit in there so loosely, like real bad, so you can move them up and down, but constituting this as articulation is like saying a loose tooth has articulation. Just because it's on the verge of falling out doesn't mean it has articulation. This is awful. So the articulation on this is just outright weird. We've got this in and out slightly, which kind of doesn't bring them out very dynamically. It brings them out kind of awkwardly and tapered inwards like this. Not very nice. As well as that, these rotate on the spot, and we've got the weirdest wing bend I've ever seen. So we're going to throw these on to see what that looks like on, and you'll see why it's so weird. So as for the connection point, this doesn't seem to be any sort of Bandai standard, so it's just for this guy, I guess. And just check out these weird thrusters. So all they can do is rotate up like this, down like this, then out like this, in and out like this. That doesn't look particularly good from any angle. And the worst aspect is what the hell is this? That doesn't look good. That doesn't make any sense. If it bent the other way, at least it would make some kind of sense. This is weird. Like, if you just think of this from a logical perspective, you've got thrust coming out here, makes sense, you're moving forward. Thrust here, also moving forward, maybe slightly downwards, depending on the way the wings are working. Some kind of thrust here that can be used as, I guess, backwards, or a bit of a flip, or a break. But if you bend these down, what's he gonna do? Scald off the back of his leg? I mean, even up like this, they don't make any sense. You've got this thrust that will move it upwards, and thrust that kind of works almost the reverse direction. These don't look good in any pose. All in all, kind of just adds to the lameness. Did I mention just for a few hundred more yen, you can grab yourself a Master Grade Freedom 2.0 instead of this right here. So all in all, the articulation is so-so. The knees and the arms are stuck at 90 degrees, which makes it a bit lame looking. And there's not much here either, so you're never going to get anything too dynamic out of this. Sometimes I'm wondering if Reborn 100s are just made to just stand there in the background behind your master grades. So that is it for the review, and basically the word that sums this up entirely is why. The Vig Nagina, or the Begina Gina, is a fairly vague-ish mobile suit already, but this right here is just a mobile suit variant on it. There's no manga of this, there's no movie of this, there's no series with this in it, and although it is an absolutely spectacular design, the execution here just doesn't work. I mean, seriously, I'm just looking at this a little bit more, and now I've seen this. The top of these pipes, look at that, they're just kind of held together in a weird way instead of just flowing up together side by side. This kit is just... Mm, it's nasty all around. So I could go on all day about the bad aspects of this. I guess the good aspect is just standing there, silhouette-wise and structurally, it does look quite good. If you do detail this up and paint it, it can look awesome in the background, but it will never really look good in a pose because of its very basic articulation. This one right here, if you're planned out of box build it, I say avoid it completely. Unless you're gonna go to town with the painting, detailing, even putting some work into the articulation on it, I would say that's the only case in which you should buy this, but there's so much better kits out there, more enjoyable kits, even at the same price range, I just don't see the point. Honestly, it's not all that often that a Gunpla kit comes out that I say outright avoid completely. I think over the entirety of reviewing kits, I'd say there was three. The Tristan, this, and there was also a variant of the Perfect Strike Gundam that was based on an old high grade. I never actually got around to reviewing that, but that would have been on the list too. But all in all, I'd say take a hard pass on the Begina Gina 2. However, if you do want it, there is a link down there. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan, as well as a whole host of even better Gunpla that's well worth your hard-earned money, unlike this. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.